Hey everyone, this is S.M. Pratt, and today we're going to take a look at some Star Wars collectibles, including the rarest and most valuable item in the hobby, the Rocket Firing Bubba Fett. Now before we get into it, let me give you a little background, because I know most of you are tuning in for my Pokemon content. I pretty much only value the original Star Wars trilogy. Yes, I'm one of those guys. Yes, I am subscribed to Red Letter Media. In my opinion, I think the original three films were a nice, organic story. And since then, Star Wars has evolved into an unstoppable beast. I mean, if there's a physical object out there that exists, there's probably a Star Wars version that you can purchase. Now, Star Wars is more of a brand than anything. And why I'm beginning with this perspective is because I think where the true and most organic core of collecting exists in Star Wars is in that original era. Very similar to Pokemon in the late 90s, early 2000s, Watsy era, that's very similar to the late 70s, early 80s, Kenner, Star Wars era. So we're going to go ahead and start with some of the tops packs, just to give you a look at some of the early concept art and design for Star Wars. I mean, this is what it's all about. This was early days for Star Wars. You had Luke right here with a jawline that never happened. And for me, I just love this concept art. I love the early designs. I know it says extra sticker in every pack and they're trying to sell you their product, but you didn't have a hundred YouTube channels doing reaction videos. You didn't have hype channels. You didn't have all the data analytics on what's trending. It was just a simpler time. And because of that, what everybody wants to see, I think partly why it's so valuable is not because of its physical attributes. I think mostly it's because of that organic era. So this is the holy grail of Star Wars. This is what everybody wants to see. That little grayish blue figure in front of you is the rocket firing Bubba Fett. And of course it's not about its physical beauty because it's just some type of gray blue design like most prototype designs. It's all about that story, all about that release. So for those who aren't aware, in 1979, Kenner ran a mail-away campaign. Very common back then, if similar to like the Masaki release of the mail-away campaign for, you know, the Pokemon collectors. It's something you saw in the 90s, you know, you send in your proof of purchase, you get a reward. However, this was never released. This was never publicly distributed in any way whatsoever. And it's because of this little Red Rocket, yeah, go ahead, laugh it up. It's because of that little plastic bit right there. That little piece right there is why this was never released. So back then, you had an issue of kids consuming plastic for some reason. That little piece, they just tossed it in their mouth and it caused problems. Therefore, this was a risk. And it also marked the beginning of PC culture. It's all because of Rocket Bubba Fett. But the bottom line is this was never released and none of the campaigns were fulfilled. None of the mail away proof of purchases were returned. And, and you, I think you received a Boba Fett that just had like a fixed back to it. You didn't actually get, you know, that rocket firing mechanism. So the estimated amount that survived after all of that, the top down order was to destroy these action figures. And sure enough, somebody had some little foresight and they're like, hang on, I think this might have some legs to it. Around 100 is the estimated survival total. And this is nothing new for most collectors. I think what I'm piecing together here, I think a lot of people are like, oh, this is just like Honus Wagner. This is very similar to Pokemon trophy cards, Pikachu Illustrator, and so on. So for Honus Wagner, you had a similar situation. You know, the optimistic story is Honus Wagner said, hang on, don't put my card with tobacco packs. I don't want kids, you know, buying tobacco. There are multiple stories, but the bottom line is Honus Wagner's card has an estimated 50 to 100 examples in total. Very similar here with the rocket firing Bubba Fett. In fact, that pattern is why items like this skyrocket, no pun intended, because they have this nice organic story, this nice organic release. This wasn't Kenner getting wise and saying, hang on, let's do one of 50. Let's do a one of one. This is completely organic. And I think that, again, is why it's so valuable. You're going to hear that word organic at least five more times in this video because I think that's why it continues to climb and why it's a genuine piece of history and an artifact for Star Wars is because it has this nice origin to it. So let's take a close up look. Everyone's probably tired of hearing me talk and hear about the history. 
So this is a close-up view of the actual prototype. And really the back is what people want to see. But while we're looking at the front here, again, one color. I, I've heard that there was a yellow boot or at least the yellow. There was a yellowish paint on the lower body. This one, of course, is just one color. Now turning it around to the back, this is what I think this is just it right here. You know, this is the rocket firing aspect of Bubba Fett. So you can see it has that pull down lever right there. You put the rocket in the top. And this is actually the L curve. This is the L slot. There's an L slot and a J slot. So it's designated as L slot because the J one, there's more of a curve where it locks in. This one just gets pushed to the side. And basically you took this little red rocket, put it in the top, pulled it down and fire away. That was entertaining in 1979. Also, I should mention this grade, let me turn it back around. This received a 90 grade. You see that at the bottom, try to get that angle there on camera. You can see that it states the year is released. Kenner Star Wars prototype action figure, Bubba Fett, rocket firing L slot. And there you go with the registered cert number. Now, what's really nice about this is that this also came with paperwork and I'm not really gonna show, I don't wanna show too much on camera because there's personal details included, but it includes old paper trails from back in the day. You know, this one was from 2003 and you have a nice printout of the story. There's even handwritten documents included. And this is what I like about this is that you don't see this with trading cards too often. You know, you also have, let me try to show you another older letter of authenticity. You know, we're going back here. Um, I'm covering, I'm keeping the names out of, out of the shot here. And also they included the bit here for damage. It's hard to make out because it's so zoomed in. Uh, but just showing you what is included whenever you do purchase this. I think it's just all about that history. Obviously, this grayish blue Bubba Fett is not the most attractive. He's definitely not the Slave Leia aesthetic appeal. Uh, so it's more about that history. And I think it's cool how that paper trail continues. And the provenance is what it's all about with something like this. Also, you can get a look at the current authenticity or certificate of authenticity you can see the details right there get a little bit closer for the more seasoned viewers who need to zoom in a little bit again you could see it says rocket firing l slot and then you could see it was signed there by tom derby and then all the lovely legalese at the bottom but there you can see the grade as well and when it was graded and now the question people are probably asking is value right i've mentioned that this is the most valuable i've talked about how it's similar to honus wagner in its release its design everything it, just that whole organic you know essence it has the same thing going on so an 85 grade sold for eighty-six thousand three hundred eighty-three dollars and 47 cents don't forget the 47 cents and apparently a 90 grade sold Exact same grade as this for $145,000. In my opinion, this is an item, you know, in the over a decade that I've been involved with collectibles. When you're dealing with the top echelon, you know, whether it is the Mantle Rookies or it's the Honus Wagners or it's the Rocket Bubba Fetts or it's the Pikachu Illustrators, the Trophy Cards, the Lotuses, go down the line. Um, you're dealing with a category that you can, the supply will never meet the demand. There's never enough supply to meet the demand. So therefore, it's very difficult to imagine something like this would ever decrease in value because this is basically a museum piece. This is something you should see in a museum because it is a cornerstone of Star Wars history. Just a cornerstone, I think, of general history at this point, uh, especially if you want to broaden that to toy history, collectible history. But at the end of the day, that is the current market value and it's just one of those items that, you know, if you want it, you pay whatever it goes for. You know, very similar to what I tell people about Pokemon cards. If you want to buy an illustrator, you're going to pay a new price. You know, that's just what it is because it's not something where you have the luxury to negotiate. Uh, because again, it's maxed out in every category. Rarity, it's one of the rarest, not only Star Wars collectibles, one of the rarest items out there in all collectibles. It's got this fantastic organic story. Uh, again, it's similar to the Watsy era. It's just fully loaded in every aspect. And 
yeah, there you go, guys. There, it, this, you could just go on forever talking about this. I mean, I've tried to be steady on camera holding it, but uh, it's just... I, I'm lost for words. It's just a piece of history. That's all I can say over and over again. So there you go, guys. That is the rarest and most valuable item in Star Wars collectibles. Hopefully you appreciate this video. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know if you value any of the other Star Wars movies. I grew up a little bit with the prequels. I just can't get down with it. I can't get down with the CGI, the midichlorians. I'm just not going. But let me know your thoughts, guys. As usual, hopefully this was entertaining, useful, and that is pretty much it. Till next time.